Hey, dude. How you doing, Dan? Oops. How are you? I'm breathing. Another day in paradise. Another day in paradise. Yeah. Well, it's just, uh, you know, people from all over the world are asking the same questions. Yeah, Silver's up over 28 tonight. This is only the beginning, I think. Beginning of what? Well, if we're talking silver and gold, the beginning of the... Well, not the beginning. I mean, it's uh, according to the pros, this is like the third stage over the, the last decade or so. And it's this stage where it's supposed to really take off, so... Well, it's long overdue. Well, yeah. I mean, if the governments keep doing us a favor, just keep printing money. Let it rip. Let it rip. I mean, the Bank of Japan said, didn't they, the other day, that they will, what was the term they used? They will print an indefinite amount. Well, something you to that. spend $2,000 on a share of Tesla, right? Yeah. That, that, that doesn't make any money. Yep. Or you can invest in gold. That will preserve you $2,000. You said they don't make any money? How dare you? Well, they don't. If you're looking at their operations, they lose money. Well, if you look at their balance sheet, their income statement, things like cash flow statements. But, you know, who looks at those anymore? That's, that's, that's old school. PE ratios, debt to equity ratios. No need to worry about that. No, not in that company, you don't. We don't need no debt to equity ratios. We don't need no cash flow. No, no, they, they believe in blowing up balance sheets on these new age companies. <laughs> Who needs a balance sheet? Well, everything is like this. Oh, steroids. Everything's on steroids. Yeah, everything is just about show. Like you said, facade. Well, it is. I mean, everything, everything, even our food is, is infiltrated with, uh, you know, the meats with steroids. That's why you see kids now 17 years old with banana foot, you know, a size 14 sneaker. And I'm not exaggerating. It's like commonplace. A size 13 is like commonplace now, right? Remember when we were growing up? Nobody had a size 13. Does your feet tie directly to hormones? Well, all right, here we go. I'm not Marcus Welby, MD, but uh, uh, I don't know the answer to that. But, you know, I, I, I can tell you, again, growing up even three decades ago or so, which isn't that long ago in the scheme of things. Uh, very rarely did you see somebody, even on the high school football team, with the 13 or 14 shoe. Right. Now it, it's probably commonplace. The kids play in line. They all got 13s, I'll bet you. Well, listen, you want to get into it? Yeah, let's do it. Hey, welcome, everybody. This week we have Dan back. I wanted to say thank you to everybody who's been sending in emails. I try to reply to everybody. We were talking about it. Next week, we're going to open it up to whoever wants to join us. 8.30 Eastern time next Sunday. Mm -hmm. So if you'd like to join us, leave a message in the comments. Mm -hmm. And you have to leave your email. Now, you can either email it to me or you can leave it in the comments. And then I have to send you an invitation by email, and then you just click on the link. Now, I'm almost pretty sure that you're going to have to download the Zoom software to your computer. Mm -hmm. So give yourself an extra half an hour to get that on your computer and get it running if you don't already have it. So without further ado, Dan, do you want to read tonight or do you want me to read? No, I'd be happy to. Thank you. Yeah, that would be great. Especially since I missed last week. Right. Right. Okay. Okay. So what are we looking at here? Uh, Revelation 11. Berean Study Bible. All right. The two witnesses. Shall I start? Okay. Please. Then I was given a measuring rod like a staff and was told, go and measure the temple of God and the altar, and count the number of worshipers there. But exclude the courtyard outside the temple. Do not measure it, 
because it has been given over to the nations and they will trample the holy city for 42 months. And I will empower my two witnesses and they will prophesy for 1260 days clothed in sackcloth. <clears throat> These witnesses are the two olive trees and the two lampstands that stand before the Lord of the earth. If anyone wants to harm them, fire proceeds from their mouths and devours their enemies. In this way, anyone who wants to harm them must be killed. These witnesses have power to shut the sky so that no rain will fall during the days of their prophecy and power to turn the waters into blood and to strike the earth with every kind of plague as often as they wish. The witnesses killed and raised. When the two witnesses have finished their testimony, the beast that comes up from the abyss will wage war with them and will overpower and kill them. Their bodies will lie in the street of the great city, figuratively called Sodom and Egypt, where their Lord was also crucified. For three and a half days, all peoples and tribes and tongues and nations will view their bodies and will not permit them to be laid in a tomb. And those who dwell on the earth will gloat over them and will celebrate and send one another gifts because these two prophets had tormented them. But after the three and a half days, the breath of life from God entered the two witnesses and they stood on their feet and great fear fell upon those who saw them. And the witnesses heard a loud voice from heaven saying, come up here. And they went up to heaven in a cloud as their enemies watched them. <clears throat> Excuse me. And in that hour, there was a great earthquake and a tenth of the city collapsed. 7,000 were killed in the quake and the rest were terrified and gave glory to the God of heaven. The second woe has passed. Behold, the third woe is coming shortly. The seventh trumpet. Then the seventh angel sounded his trumpet and loud voices called out in heaven. The kingdom of the world has become the kingdom of our Lord and of his Christ, and he will reign forever and ever. And the 24 elders who sit on the thrones before God fell on their faces and worshiped God, saying, We give thanks to you, O Lord, all God Almighty, the one who is and who was, because you have taken your great power and have begun to reign. The nations were engaged and your wrath has come. The time has come to judge the dead and to reward your servants, the prophets, as well as the saints and those who fear your name, both small and great, and to destroy those who destroy the earth. Then the temple of God in heaven was opened and the ark of his covenant appeared in his temple. And there were flashes of lightning and rumblings and peals of thunder and an earthquake and a great hailstorm. What does Revelation chapter 11 actually mean? Well, this chapter introduces two prophets referred to as the two witnesses. Their message, supernatural power, death, and resurrection are dramatic moments in the story of the end times. Their influences precedes the end of the trumpet judgments. <clears throat> excuse me, and sets the stage for, final, for the final series, the seven bowl judgments. John is first given a measuring device and told to measure the temple, altar, and worshipers. Measuring in that era was symbolic of ownership. Only those who had rights to something, land, a building, or people were allowed to measure it. As part of this task, John is told that the outer court of the temple is not to be measured. This area occupied by the nations, which is a term for Gentiles, is part of a trampling experienced by Jerusalem in the end times. Revelation 1, verses 1 through 2. <clears throat> God next introduces two unidentified witnesses who stand in Jerusalem and proclaim him. Obviously, at this time, that message will not be well received. However, the men are supernaturally protected. Everyone who tries to hurt them, obliterated by fire from the witnesses' own mouths, these men are also able to bring various plagues on earth, such as drought. Finally, these two men will be murdered by 
the beast that rises from the bottom, bottomless pit. Most interpreters believe this is the same beast described in Revelation chapter 13, also referred to as the Antichrist. To the unbelieving world, this will seem like a major victory. Their leader will have defeated those claiming to speak for God. The world will be so overjoyed at this triumph that they will celebrate and exchange gifts while leaving the bodies to rot in the streets. Thanks to modern technology, it's entirely possible that people across the entire world can see these events happen in real time. Revelation 11, verses 7 through 10. <clears throat> After three and a half days, however, the joy of the world will turn into shock and horror. God will resurrect the two witnesses in full view of the world. Announced by a voice and carried by a cloud, they will be taken into heaven. At the same time, a massive earthquake will strike Jerusalem, destroying a tenth of the city and killing 7,000. Those who survive will not honor God deliberately, but their fearful reactions will demonstrate his glory. Revelation 11, verses 11 through 13. Earlier, those reading Revelation were warned about certain woes yet to come. The first and second of these were the fifth and sixth trumpet judgments, respectively. These were far worse than the terrible trumpet judgments that came before. The third woe will be inaug inaugurated with the seventh trumpet. Just as the seventh trumpet judgments were all part of the seventh seal, the seventh trumpet will contain individual events. No as the bold judgments, known as the bold judgments, excuse me. In the meantime, as the seventh trumpet sounds, heaven praises God for his righteous judgment on evil. Revelation 11, verses 14 through 19. The next few chapters will discuss seven major figures in the end times, including the Antichrist and the false prophet. Chapter 16 will resume the sequence of judgments and begin bringing the book of Revelation to a close. Who are the two witnesses? Well, somebody, I guess, that God uh, brings to the forefront, I guess, and then brings them back to life as well, as it said here, right? It said somewhere in there that the world rejoices because these people had been chastising the earth and then they were killed for being false prophets by the Antichrist. Right, right. so here, here's the thing, and, 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 and scroll down a little bit, because there were a couple of sections in here when I was reading. I didn't want to stop. But, so basically what's going to happen is you've got the seven-year period or tribulation, right? Again, it's broken up into two pieces, right? Three and a half years and three and a half years. So there's the seven-year tribulation. Three and a half years, three and a half years. So basically what happens is in the first three and a half years, there's, there's a big agreement is going to come between uh, Israel. Okay. And basically I believe uh, Palestine <clears throat> as, a release, as it relates to uh, the West Bank. And what's going to happen is, is that when that big agreement um, comes, you know, a lot of the world is, is, is going to be happy about that. <clears throat> and um, these two people that, 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 that uh, were spoken about here, the witnesses are going to kind of look kind of wrong at that point. And uh, people are going to um, probably like point fingers at them, <clears throat> chastise them and whatever, right? Um, but But really... <laughs> That agreement uh, that, 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 that really, as I understand it, essentially kicks off the seven-year period is going to be reneged upon like 1,200 and some odd days after or over a, a little over three years after that. Um, so the, the Antichrist is going to be a very, um, <clears throat> excuse me, chas uh, charismatic figure. Somebody who uh, literally is probably going to be handsome and good looking. Somebody who speaks very well, articulates very well. Somebody who's going to have a lot of charm. Um, okay, so we know it's not Trump. Yep. Um, and yeah, 
exactly. And um, they they also prognosticate the experts, uh, the scholars and stuff prognosticate that this person is going to come from somewhere in Europe. Either really? that's not what I heard. Well, that's I, that, I heard it was a Middle Eastern guy. <clears throat> I'm and hearing Europe. Sexual. I'm hearing Europe to Eastern Europe, somewhere around there, and. And, the, and so you're going to have the Antichrist and the false prophet. The two are going to be kind of joined at the hip. Now, the false prophet, as I understand it, and I could be wrong, uh, is going to be essentially, they think probably the Pope. Well, we're getting ahead of ourselves. This is, this is ahead, of, ahead of where we are right now, right? Yeah, well, sorry about that. Well, but, but somewhere in here, if you scroll down, it, it, it talks about that. It definitely alludes to all that. So there it is, like the Antichrist in chapter. You're right. We got ahead a little bit. Revelation 13 also referred to as Antichrist, the unbelieving world. This will seem like a major victory. So of the agreement I talked about, I ended up jumping ahead a little bit, but the agreement and stuff I talked about, um, you know, uh, that, that victory. Let's just focus on the, what's at hand, dude, okay? Yeah, no, 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 understood. Well, understood. The witnesses are obviously going to be known by the world. They're not going to, it's not going to be uh, Joe and Harry, right? It's going to be, it's going to be famous people. Uh, not Joe or Harry, probably not Dave and Dan either. So, yep, to your point. So the question is, do we know who the witnesses are now? I don't. No, I, I'm saying, do you think that they're alive right now? Uh, wow. It's a big question. <laughs> um, possibly, I, you know. Um, uh, I think, let me put it this way. That's a good question. Um, let me ask you a question. Uh, I know this is going way off topic. Okay. But I, what, what I would, <laughs> is the antichrist crazy. alive right now? If he's well, alive, then they might be alive. Well, I think there's a distinct possibility that he is alive. Yep. Go ahead. Okay. Go ahead. What came into my mind when you were reading one of these is how Jim Willie was saying JFK Jr. is alive. Oh. Now, wouldn't that be something if, you know, because he's dead? So wouldn't that kind of be like he was brought back to life? Kind of like what that was saying? Couldn't that meet this prophecy? Well... I guess potentially, I never thought of that, but who am I to say? Well, technically he's brought back to life, right? It would have to be. Um. Now, if, I mean, if JFK Jr. actually shows up at the end of the year, I, I don't think he is. No, I, I, I mean, I, I mean, but if he does, I, I can't think of an event in our lifetime that would be more shocking than that. That would be All like right. that, that would be like aliens coming to Earth. Okay, I'll play along with you. If he actually makes a cameo appearance, whatever you want to call it, the end of the year or the beginning of next year, believe me, that will be newsworthy. No, that's and, not what I'm saying. I'm not saying it's newsworthy. I'm saying well, I, I'm I saying it will be the biggest event of of our life <clears throat> that somebody. I understand. And I understand that me saying newsworthy is a grand understatement. I understand that. I was kind of being facetious. How, I mean, how would that, that would, not, how would that not tip everybody's, I mean, right now, everybody in the world is questioning their own. I, I'd say a lot of people are questioning whether what they believed in their own country and their own world is accurate after what's happened this year. So I now, agree. now that's, that's the left. Now the right would be him coming in, and now everybody will be like, oh, my God, what's going on? Well, now, that would, you would, now you wouldn't believe anything. Well, but on the other hand, you would believe everything as it related to God, right? Because if you saw him walk through the door, this guy alive all of a sudden, um, there's only, you know, one being that could make that happen, maybe two, but definitely at least one. And we know who that is. That would be God Almighty himself. 
And for the believers, uh, like you and me and a lot of other folks that believe, I mean, that would just be um, amazing and probably, I guess, a blessing as well, right? I mean, it, it would definitely confirm, you know, for those on the fence, uh, would probably confirm their belief. Now, we also, does the Bible... Does the Bible say that the Antichrist will be a man? I don't know. Good question. If it specifically says man off the top of my head, but uh, it, it's inferenced. It's definitely inferenced. It's not a woman. I've never known it uh, ever to be a woman. And, and I don't mean that in any kind of way, shape, or, you know, or whatever, bias way or whatever. Um. It, it does, even the way it's written and the way it intimates, um, it, 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 it's not intimated as a woman. I could be totally wrong, but that's not my understanding. De okay. Definitely a nine out of 10 chance, if not higher, a man. So, so what is this? So that's what came into my mind as you were reading this is That would really, I, I don't know how it plays into this exactly, but that would be, that would be earth shattering, I think. That, I, I just, I, you just underplayed it, but I, I, I can't uh, say strongly enough how much that would rock the world if, if that guy shows up. Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. Go to the, uh, can you especially go? Especially if he comes in and says, especially if he comes in and says, uh, you know, I was killed by, uh, you know, whoever, right? Or attempted. Well, look, you know, I, I've never known in the history of mankind other than um, Christ performing some miracles anyone ever brought back from the dead except by God himself, or in this case, Christ. Christ brought back, what, one or two people when he performed his various miracles? One of them was Lazarus, I think? Yeah, there was Lazarus, and then there was another guy who, um, I was just reading it a couple of weeks ago, I forget the guy's name, but he, um, and this he died and he brought him back. Yeah, I mean, guys, I mean, this is hugely important. I mean, um, this is not storybook stuff. I mean, Christ actually did this, and there was a lot of witnesses that saw this happen, not to mention, you know, uh, the apostles and stuff, right? I mean, and uh, especially when Christ came back himself after he was uh, crucified, uh, when he was seen walking down the road and uh, stuff like that. But even while he was here for, what, two and a half, three years when he was hanging out, if you will, with the prophets, I mean, he just performed uh, miracles after miracles, and uh, this stuff was recorded. It was written down. I would have written it down, too, back then, if I were alive then. So it says, these witnesses are the two olive trees and the two lampstands that stand before the Lord of the earth. Yeah, go back to the interpretation. Pull up the interpretation thing on that. I don't think it talks about that. Okay. Uh, the, the nation produces two prophets referred to as two witnesses. Their message, yeah. supernatural power, death, and resurrection are dramatic moments. Mm -hmm. But it doesn't say who they are or mm -hmm. where they're from. No. I guess it doesn't matter. Well, it kind of does matter. Well, okay, put it this way. Maybe that stuff will be revealed when the time comes, right? I mean, if God didn't include it in his word right now, specifically. Well, God introduces two unidentified, right. unidentified witnesses. Yeah. So in God's mind, Who's I don't want to argue with you. I don't want to argue with you, buddy. But, you know, if the big yeah. guy wants it, he wants to introduce it that way, you know, it, he's going to do it his way, hence his word. Well, 
how could the world be watching this? So, see, I'm trying to understand this, and, and this, this chapter is not just jiving for me. Um, yeah, you probably just got to read it two or three times. The two unidentified witnesses, hold on, uh, who stand in Jerusalem and pro proclaim him. Obviously, at this time, that message will not be well received. However, he then goes on to say the men are supernaturally protected. Everyone who why, tries. Why is it obviously this message will not be well received? Well, Nashing. just because this says unidentified doesn't mean we won't know who they are. Yeah. It's just yeah. unidentified in the Bible. Yeah, exactly. So yeah. these could be these could be preachers. They could be business leaders. They could be uh, politicians. <clears throat> Excuse me. Yep. Mm -hmm. You didn't take the Robitussin? Uh, no, not tonight. But I do have pH 7 water available. Yeah. Well, that's very interesting that says these men are able to bring plagues on earth. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, here's the thing, Dave. I don't think you should be so hung up on, you know, who are they? Who are they? They're not identified. You know, in due time, right? I mean, so my, my, my answer to that would be um, just accept it, okay? Because real simple, and we've talked about this, God knows the beginning, the end, and everything in between. Yeah, yeah, but what, it's, what, what this is insinuating is these are guys going around telling people they need to repent or they need to reform, and, and they basically... And people don't want to hear born, it. And they bring upon you know, like the locusts or the earthquakes or the fires. Yeah. 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 Or maybe these uh, vaccines. Yeah, that too. Could be <clears throat> modern day. We will so, see. So could Bill Gates be a witness? I don't know, man. Maybe, potentially. Because the witnesses are supposed to be good guys, aren't they? Well, if you want to put things simplistically, boil it down to good and bad, I would say they fall on the side of good. They're the white hats, and they're essentially messengers of God. And they're basically telling man, okay, because man is a hardhead, let's face it, right? God created us in his image, yeah. but he gave us free will. Man has proven for the last 6,000 plus years that he wants to do what he wants to do, and he's going to do what he's going to do. Hence, we have wars. Hence, we have infighting. Hence, we have divorce. Hence, we have jealousy, sin, you name it, right? So when his messengers come and give a message to man, basically saying, hey, guys, uh, you really need to ship up or shape, you know, shape up or ship out. Well, are you, are, are you surprised at all? that the bulk of mankind will not like that message? Who are you guys to tell me how to live and what to do and not to live <clears throat> how I see fit, even though I might be living in Sodom and Gomorrah? Who the heck are you guys to tell me? I don't like you. I don't like your message. Once again, that's God, you know, because of his love. Um, trying to hold his wrath off. But he'll only hold his wrath. He'll only hold his fire for so long. So the, so the Antichrist kills the witnesses, and they don't allow them to get buried. They just leave them, in, they leave them <clears throat> mm -hmm. dead where they were basically in the street, it sounds like. Isn't that nice? Until God comes down and raises them up three days later, is it? Let's say two or three days later somewhere. Regardless of two or three days, whatever, the point is if he raises them up, you know, that, what does that tell you? That's a miracle, obviously, well, right? Yeah, but. People no. are going to take notice. They're well, going to be like. Christ was dead how many days? Christ was dead uh, two and a half, almost three days. He went as uh, Christ, as far as I know, he died on, on a Friday and he was risen on a Sunday, right? Right. 
They will prophesy for 1260 days. They do 1260 days. Mm -hmm. It's okay. three and a half years. It's three and a half years. It's three and a half years. So that's that first half of the tribulation you were talking about. Yes. And then the second half really gets bad. That's where the gnashing of teeth comes in to play. Well, I mean, that's where they talk about the earthquake that kills 7,000 people. Well, not to mention that during that time as well, people have to understand that I think it's like one third of the earth will perish. So these witnesses have power to shut the sky so that no rain will fall during the days of their prophecy. Yeah. So no rain for three and a half years? I don't know if it's saying no rain for three and a half years, but they'll have the ability to, just, you know, shut stuff down, so to speak. They want to turn the water off. Now, there is going to be pestilence. There's going to be famine. There's going to be deaths by wild beasts. There's going to be death by wars. You name it. In the second half. Yes. So the first half is God's attempt to wake people up again like, he, like he's been trying. I guess that's a simplistic way to put it. And when the, these two people are killed, I think he just says, okay, <laughs> call out the dogs. For three and a half days, they were dead. For three and a half days, all peoples and tribes will view the bodies and will not permit them to be laid in a tomb. Isn't that great? So maybe they maybe they were being viewed like they do leaders after they're assassinated, you know, or they die. Mm -hmm. And those who dwell on the earth will gloat over them, and will celebrate and send one another gifts because these two prophets had tormented them. I interpret that as you know the prophets saying stuff that people just don't want to hear, and and again we already know that the bulk of people are not going to turn towards God, unfortunately the bulk will continue to, you know, have their back towards him or turn away. So only a minority will turn towards God. Now, what percentage? I don't know. The nations were enraged and your wrath has come. The time has come to judge the dead and to reward hmm. your servants, the prophets. Exactly. As well as the saints. So this is it. They're saying, okay, the final straw. Well, what it doesn't say, it doesn't say, it doesn't say that the two witnesses had any real followers or fanfare. No, no. I think they, their main purpose was just, just that. You know, they, they, they weren't like to be apostles. That wasn't their purpose or anything like that. Their but purpose. They were, they were there three and a half years. Yeah, but but the, but their main purpose was Making just hot shots at people. Well, but ultimately to, to to deliver a message for God, right? They're messengers of God. That's how I see it. And most people are not going to heed it. Basically, they're going to think it's a joke and everything else. Like in our society, I no. I, uh, but but in our society today, people have anybody. Anybody who would speak like this would have, would have a certain percentage of the population in their corner. But it doesn't sound like that. It sounds like, it sounds like the whole world hated them from the way, the way this is talking. Yeah. I mean, why are you surprised? I'm not surprised. I'm not surprised. It, it goes back to what I said earlier. These guys are basically messengers and they're going to be saying stuff that most people don't want to hear most right yeah, so so they're going to be saying you know you're killing babies and you're going to hell for yeah them, right? yeah yeah and yeah they may, not put it, they may not put it in those exact words but i i can tell you okay like you just touched on something which is which is a firestone in our country right which is ab abortion right well that's why i picked that yeah so real simple okay this is what I say to people. You got two choices. They'll be Either, burning effigies of them. <laughs> okay. You only, you got two choices. I boil it down real simple. Okay. You either believe in God or you don't. Okay. If you believe in God, you believe in his word. If you believe in his word, then you believe that 
um, if you know anything about his word, okay, God values family, God values children, okay? God values life, period. But those people, those people don't period. believe it's life. It doesn't matter, Dave. It, it doesn't care. But that's how they're able to justify <clears throat> their own mind. Yeah, but, but this is what I'm trying to tell you, and I've told family members this too that did argue with me, and I say, well, take it up with God, okay? I'll say, first of all, have you read the Bible? No. Are you familiar with the word at all? No. Yeah. Okay, so then your opinion means nothing. Okay. And then the next thing I say to people is, and they don't like it, but it's true. So what else, what else are the witnesses going to talk about abortion? What else? Well, I don't know if specifically they're going to talk about abortion. The bottom line is they're messengers of God. They're going to be telling people basically, like I said, again, stuff that I guess abortion would be a, an extreme example, right? People don't want to hear it. Right. So, you know, uh, that that's one extreme example. I mean, marriage between a man and a woman is is another example, right? A day in the Bible is not a day on earth. Exactly. Exactly. So, you know, when when Christ was talking about uh, in different parts of the Bible, the second coming and stuff like that, like two or three thousand years ago, he's coming soon. Well, Think about it, guys. Use your common sense. I mean, to us, 2,000 years. Oh, my God, that's forever. You know, because we only live 70 or 80 years or 100 years if we're lucky. I mean, but to God, think about it. What's 2,000 years? That's it's a snap. It's a blink. That's like saying to you and me, hey, I'll see you in three weeks at the uh, shindig, you know. You're lucky or, if you live 100 years? Modern man now, yeah. I mean, uh, Noah lived over 900 years. Um, uh, is that being lucky or unlucky? <clears throat> well, life was a lot different back then. Um, they probably weren't no, strict. I'm saying living to 100 years today. You said if you're lucky, might be a curse. I guess. I mean, if you want to hone in on every word I say. Yeah, maybe it's a curse. I mean, if you're kept alive an extra 20 years because you're on 16 pharmaceuticals and you're sitting there like well, in a chair. Your words carefully, Dan. With all due respect, you know, drooling on yourself um, and you're out of it. You don't know what's going on. I mean, yeah, I mean, okay, you lived 100 years, but, you know, the last 20 of, the, uh, of them you were wearing diapers. Well, let, me, let me go off on a tangent here. Does our... Yeah. Does our, yeah, does our country, You're good at that. <laughs> our, well, I just, I just go with what comes into my mind. Does our country value quality, quantity or quality more? Well, at this point in time, I would have to lean more towards quantity because um, I even have this debate with my folks and stuff um, that are boomers. Um, and they make comments all the time, like people are making more money than ever before. People are living longer than ever before, blah, blah, blah. And I'm like, yeah, okay, that's true. On the surface, those things are true. Um, <clears throat> if you're talking about making more money than ever before, maybe at an aggregate or nominal level they are. But what they fail, fail to realize is or bring up is the last hundred years since 1913, uh, the value of your money has been steadily doing this over time losing two or 3%, which is a form of taxation without representation. They've built in inflation on purpose through manipulating interest rates and the printing of money. So that's my answer to them on that. In terms of living longer, yeah, people are living longer than ever before, at least right now in the US. But the main reason for that is we all know why. You don't have to have a degree in epidemiology to take a guess why. Yeah, I mean, the, Doritos. the average American, I would, and nothing against, I'm just take baby boomers as an example, because they're 65, 70, 75 now. I would, and I don't know, so people don't get on me for guessing, but I would guess the average boomer is probably on three to five medications, or two to four, if I had to guess. So one of them being blood pressure right off the top is one. You've got more of a health background than I do because your sister, you tell me what, what, what are some other guesses? Blood pressure for sure. No, I, I think uh, 
I, I think uh, most Maybe. people are overweight, so I would guess most people have diabetes. Diabetes would be another guess, so be type 2, which is more than controllable through diet and exercise. Yep. But, but and, we're, and the other big right. one that people take is cholesterol. Yeah, so there you go. There's two or three right there. So a lot of people are on three to five. And Don't then when you- the blue pill. The, that too. <clears throat> so, so then you factor in uh, the side effects each one may have. Then you factor in when you're taking two, three, or four of these things, in addition to their individual side effects, what about their cross reactions, if you will, with the other stuff that's being taken? Does anybody know about that? I venture to say no. Actually, there's a, um, my sister was saying that um, one of the beauty, one of the advantages of the technology is they used to have to look that up manually and mm -hmm. determine well, how a drug would react with another drug. Mm -hmm. Now they have these apps. It's like a, one of those um, XY grids and it will reference all the different drugs and you say, okay, if you're taking this drug, how does it, can you take it with these? And, and then if you take these two together, can you take it with this one? It's because that, Mm -hmm. factorial of adding one factorial, two, three, all of a sudden you could get into thousands of combinations. That's exactly where I was going with it in a layman's sense. You described it better, but yeah, exactly. And then, um, yeah. And so all of a sudden somebody's more jacked up potentially. Now they're having this issue here, this issue, that issue. Now you're giving them something for this issue. Now it's a weed popping up over here. It's almost like whack-a-mole, right? You whack this one down, it pops up over here. Freaking well, nightmare. Yeah, and the reality is, is, is those drugs are created, but all of us are slightly different, and so we'll react differently to these drugs. Yes, and then the other thing I bring up to people all the time too is, uh, like just you citing my folks about the, the income levels, you know, people are making more than ever and living longer. So all these pharmaceuticals, do any of them even cure anything? As far as I know, none of them cure anything. That's not where the money's made. Oh, how silly of me. Sorry. I know it's called recurring revenue stream. I get that. Well, here's the, here's the sad truth is, number one, because, because we are not trained in this as, when we're young, and most people don't learn until they're older, I think that our bodies are damaged to the point where they're not repairable to how they used to be after years and years of abuse. Yeah, you can recover it a little bit, but you may not be able to get back to how you were before all that damage, number one, okay? And number two, for some of these diseases, what you ingest and, and how you move around can probably solve a lot of the drug issues. <laughs> Maybe not all of them, but some of them. Uh, a lot of them, if not most of them. So uh, there's a book called, and I need to buy it. I used to have a copy. I don't know what I do with it. It's like this thick, the book of home remedies. Yeah. Number one. Um, it's literally this thick. It's called the book of home remedies. You all should look it up. Um, it will cure you name it, just about anything you can think of. Gout, for example, a million ways. Uh, With natural ingredients. Absolutely. Um, another great book uh, for people to consider. This one's fascinating. It's called Dead Doctors Don't Lie. Okay. I've read that. <clears throat> and the guy that wrote the book, um, I forget his name, the doctor, but um, He's been written off. He's been called a quack. He's been minimized and everything else, but yet he has cured cancer and stuff for people naturally. To your point, Dave, most stuff can be cured naturally, um, but we live in a society, particularly with the farmers involved, <clears throat> they don't want you to know that because there's no money in it. It's real simple. Well, you've got this issue. Just take turmeric or something, you know, or, uh, you know, uh, well, I don't you know, know if you watched that video I sent to you that's called The Silent uh, Weapon. I, 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 I downloaded the PDF last night, and I, for an hour and a half, I read the first uh, 30 pages or so of William Cooper. It's fantastic. I wanted to bring that up to you tonight. That book, Behold. Well, that's what, 
that that's tied to this. It's it's yeah. it's them keeping us financially illiterate as well as <coughs> illiterate on what we ingest. It's all part of the plan. I wanted to bring this up to you, amigo. Uh, besides the book of Revelation, we need to do another video series, and we need to hone in on, in my humble opinion, behold the pale horse. That thing is a gold mine and a plethora, thanks to William Cooper, who's now deceased. Uh, he was a brave man and a great American, in my opinion. Um, yeah, and he, uh, and he, and he, um, he was killed. He said that he would go down swinging and he did. He did. And he was killed guys for that book and behold the pale horse. Now I didn't know anything about it until you sent the video to me, Dave. And as soon as I saw, <clears throat> excuse me, the title, behold the pale horse. The first thing that popped in my head, pale horse was one of the four horses, right? Of course. Which are referenced in the book of revelation, right? There's the pale that horse, the, the white one. horse, the red horse, and the black horse, right? So the pale horse references death. Yeah, that's the green horse, yeah. Yes, and so so apropos by the guy that wrote this book. I downloaded the PDF last night. It's on my phone. I started reading it. I'm going to read the whole book. It's 500 pages, 499 pages. So um, it is a fantastic piece of work. I watched that lady's video, not the diatribe too much that you sent me, the school teacher lady, she's adorable, nice. Yep. I subscribe to her channel. God bless her. She's adorable. She's a teacher, I think, teaching background. And she's a mom. You know, she's a regular person like us. She's a mom that cares. And she did a great job for that 30 minutes mapping out different pieces of the first chapter. I thought she did a fantastic job. And she said all these things touched upon what, what you just said, how they're slowly chipping away at us, um, how... They're decimating the family. I mean, we're being attacked, folks. You've got to understand multiple levels with not one or two prongs, but like a dozen prongs. So yeah, it's like a 40-year plan. <clears throat> it's a 40-year, 50-year plan. Um, the Bilderbergers started meeting. I, uh, it's the great, it's 1954, they said. 50, as early as 54, and then she referenced 69 as well. But basically, folks, this has been going on 50, 60 years. It's about a 10 or 12 prong plan where they're eliminating, decimating the family, for example. Um, they're making us weak with the food. Uh, they're telling us we need to be on drugs. It's just one thing after another. They're attacking our civil liberties. Um, they're destroying the currency. That's by design. S so that when they do think about it, guys, use your common sense. If, if you want to control somebody, what do you do? Okay. Um, it, it's well, like the see a checklist. It, if you see a checklist and then you see the checks starting to get checked off, wouldn't that raise you, you know, <clears throat> like, uh oh. Well, it would provided, provided you're noticing it. The, the problem is, right. Dave, most people in society aren't even noticing the checklist. So then it takes the few, like this lady, I forget her name, and then regular guys like you and I that try to point out this stuff. You know, some, well, will, he well, some will heed it, but the bulk will not heed it. The bulk will probably laugh at us and say we're just, we're well, out in left field. Man, we, had, we had General Wesley Clark, Clark 10 years ago saying they're going to take out seven countries in five years, right? It was about 15 years ago, I think. Yeah, yeah. He and rattled it, it off. Yeah, yeah and absolutely. Mm -hmm. And I think we've taken five of the seven out. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Just a, co just a coincidence? Oh, another part of the checklist, to your point, amigo, just is, a coincidence? is, nope, is wars. That's another part of the agenda. They get us in wars all the time, all the time. Who fights more wars in the United States? Of course, I love the U.S. I fly to, of course, I, I love my country, no doubt about it. But, but why do we fight all these wars? We're fighting constantly. As soon as we finish a war, we're on to something else. Why is that? So the, could the witnesses be talking about any of these things we just brought up? Diet, financial education, education, war. Well, I, I mean, I don't know if they'll hone in that specifically, but pretend, I think at a certain level, they'll talk about the decimation of the family. I think at a certain level, they'll talk about, for example, let's take the United States as an example. In the early 1960s, we took the Ten Commandments out of the public purview. In 1973, Roe versus Wade basically when we legalized abortion. In the late 70s, no fault divorce. I don't know the exact year, 77, 78. Somebody can look it up. Third 
third strike, no fault divorce. In the year 2015, in the year 2015, and again, nothing against anybody. I'm just being factual. Gay marriage. So if those things are not chipping away at the traditional foundation of the family, then I don't know what is. Oh, and then on top of it, <clears throat> um, you know, we don't breed by and large, for lack of a better word, alpha males leaders anymore. We just don't, as insulting as that may sound. We're taught and we're emphasized by society now to be the beta male. We are. Is it any surprise why the family's being decimated when a man can't be a leader of his family and he's told to stand down and that he's told that he's a caveman and a gorilla and he's antiquated if he tries to do so? Well, I can tell you God intended otherwise. Now, you either believe that or you don't. You either think that's a joke or you don't. It's that serious, guys. There's no screwing around here. That's what God intended, okay? So if you want to mess around with God, you want to screw around with his word, you want to laugh at him, <clears throat> you want to mock and ridicule him, go right ahead. He says in the Bible, I can't, uh, is it in Ephesians? I forget where. Uh, or is it Galatians? It might be Galatians. God says basically, and I'm paraphrasing, uh, bear with me. I will not be mocked. He says that. I will not be mocked. And think about it. Put yourself in his shoes for a minute. If you were the creator of the universe and you created mankind, okay, out of pure love, because let's face it, guys, he doesn't need us. He doesn't need me. He doesn't need Dave. He doesn't need you. He doesn't need mankind. We're really a pain in the ass in a lot of ways. He created us out of love. Okay, because he wanted something to love. But in turn, he expects a certain amount of respect and glory back and gratefulness. And we don't really give it to him. So think about it, right? So if you had some puke that you created, and now that puke is disdaining you and not even paying attention to you, mocking you and ridiculing you after he created you, how would you feel about that? Well, let me put it in these terms for those who have kids. You created your child, ultimately. How would you feel if your kid disrespected you constantly? Swore at you, ridiculed you, spit at you, whatever. Never did what you said. Uh, I'd say that happens a lot. <laughs> <clears throat> well, it does now, and it's accepted, by the way, practically. Yeah. They, people let the kids run the house, and we wonder why, whatever. That's a different topic. But I'm just trying to make a point, right? It's the same thing. We're his children at the end of the day, and he ultimately created us. Now, you either believe that or you don't. You either think that's a joke or you don't. I personally take it seriously because as a society, we've been mocking him for 50 or 60 years with all our actions, right? And basically spitting in his face. That's what I'm trying to say. He's telling us, and he keeps giving us a chance, you know, out of love. But, you know, sooner or later, he's going to turn his back on us, guys, whether you think so or not, particularly the United States. Well, what do you think this chapter just covered? Yeah. That's exactly what you know, it was. God's not capable of the sinning. The killing of the witnesses was yeah. the final straw. Right. God's not capable of, of, of sin, but what he is capable of Think about it. <clears throat> um, he's capable of, you know, basically there's us, there's him slash Jesus, the Trinity, you know, the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And then there's all hell and fury. And he's in basically in the middle. All he has to do, folks, is just step aside. Well, it's, it's written in the Bible. In the, so in, the, in, the, in the minute he steps aside. Well, it's going to happen. It is going to happen. Yes, Your it is. He's already said that. People are going to well, turn right. their back on him. I mean, it's a done deal. Well, it's prophecy. You, well, you're right. Well, and that's a good point. One third of the Bible approximately is prophetic. And for people that think that's a joke, that's fine. Think it's a joke. So here's my it challenge just, to you. It just be, is, it, this just is a reminder that we have to prepare for the inevitable. Outcome. Well, yes, but, but, but here's what I want to get across to people that aren't familiar enough with this or are believers that, that think the Bible's a joke. About a third of it's prophetic. Okay, secondly, what you've got to understand is, okay, yeah, whatever, Dan. Yeah, okay, whatever. Okay, great. So here's my challenge to you. Look up the prophecies, okay, from the very beginning to the end, and then come back and talk to me. Because every single prophecy the Bible has ever made has come to fruition. All of them, okay? No man could ever do that. 
or series of men could ever do that. Maybe be right here and there or close here and there, but no. Every well, prophecy we, we has come true. We can't even get the weather right for crying out loud. Exactly. Who in their right mind, if you saw somebody come back to life, because do you, does the Bible, does the Bible, do you take that as a literal interpretation that these witnesses will actually be brought back to life? And then brought, and then brought to heaven on a cloud, like it says? Yeah, I have to. I have to. So that, so that means people are going to, people are going to witness the witnesses being brought back to life. After being <coughs> laid out. For the world to see dead for three and a half days. I would have to say so, because when Christ was here, he performed miracle after miracle, as well as raising two or three people from the dead in front of a bunch of people, by the way. Okay. And not to mention, he was crucified, as we all know. Well, uh, my question is, is who, who listening to our voices right now, who would not notice people being now, they might be like, oh, well, doctors bring people back to life every day in hospitals. It's no big deal, right? Well, you've got between, what, five and ten minutes to bring somebody back if you yeah, don't do it with... three and a half days, yeah. Yeah, if you don't do it within what... Again, I'm not a medical professional, your sister is, but I think it's, it's between... The temperature you, of the body. But on average, I think you've got between five and ten minutes to bring them back, right? Once yeah, the heart people stops. people are like drown in really cold water, yeah. you can go like a couple hours... Okay, but 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 let's say aside from that, you got about ten minutes because other the, because yeah, suffice to say, yeah. the brain has been starved of oxygen, and at that point, you're looking at serious brain damage. Blah blah blah, right? So, but right, so somebody who's been dead for two or three days, confirmed dead, you know, and with the case of Lazarus, Lazarus, I believe, right? Um, he was dead. Uh, for a while too, I forget how long, but yeah, he, very. yeah, it was, he was like rotting flesh and everything else. The stench was unbelievable as is described. <clears throat> Anyways, my, my point is, is. And he was yeah, brought if back. You, right? if we actually witnessed somebody being, I'm trying to think. Cause I mean, this year has been such a crazy year. I'm trying to think back over the last 50 years that, uh, has there been anybody raised up? No, already? not that I know of. Yeah, I know. I don't know them. That would definitely get my attention. Well, we could do some research, do some Google searches or whatever, or look around on YouTube, but not that I know of. I mean, the great Harry Houdini said he was coming back. I don't think we've seen him yet. But my point is, is if, if anybody saw that. Agreed. Totally. Wouldn't Even a non-believer would be, I would think, amazed. Wouldn't that change your whole outlook on everything? 100%. That's a good point. 100%. That's like JFK Jr. coming back. I mean, these are like, these are like earth-shattering events that never happen. Well, let me put it this way. That's a good point. So here's what I would say. Like, take the 12 apostles, for example. These guys hung out and lived with Christ like, what, two and a half, three years, day right. in and day out. That's day exactly out. what I'm getting at. Yeah. This would now prove what they saw every day that we can only have faith in. Well, well and where I was going with this is, if, is long, if you are truly a believer, you believe that Christ is the Lord and Savior, the Son of God, died for your sins, was crucified and resurrected three days later. If you believe that, then you also should believe by default that the 12 apostles— 12 of them, not two or three of them or one of them, 12 guys hung out with him for like three years and witnessed basically, or almost if not day in and day out, you know. Yeah, maybe what? more than 12 because they had you know, <clears throat> other people hanging around too. True, but, 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 but it was the 12 apostles, you know, the inner group or whatever that, that he was training and then to go out into the world after he left. But, if you, you know, you have to believe by default is where I'm going with this then, um, that um, these, these 12 guys, what they're saying is true. And then to take it a step further, the, the, the Gospels, the four Gospels, right? Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, right? Described <clears throat> their dealings with him. So um, 
if you are a believer, then you're going to believe this. And, and I guess where I'm going with this to add to what you're saying, Dave, is if that's the case, if you do believe that, then that's a game changer. Then that, that means there is a God. You've got 12 people that, that actually lived it and saw these miracles day in and day out. But and so, according to Revelation 6, a significant percentage of the population never turns to God, even during the second half of the tribulation. And so that, that's means, true. that means that this would have no impact on them. Well, what do they think it is? Uh, David Blaine making the Statue of Liberty disappear? That's a good point. I mean, the thing, the only thing I can add to that is of the 12 apostles, again, there was Thomas, right? And that's where the term doubting Thomas comes from, right? Even Thomas that saw Christ's sacrifice and the spear driven through him, you know, there's a part in the scriptures, I forget which book, where Christ lifts up his, his uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. arm yeah, or something. There. Yeah. No, but the point is, to drive home what you just said, even a, one of the apostles that was there and saw it still was in disbelief, and that was Thomas. So can you imagine people that, you know, let's face it, Dave, we live in a world, right, that's everything's empirical now, everything's scientifically based, and nobody's going to believe it unless they see it. Everything's the facade, but everybody believes, like, we've had discussions about certain people on the internet that you believe they're real, and I'm telling you, no, 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 they're not real. This is, this is a facade. <laughs> if you were yeah. down there watching it, you'd be like, oh my God, this is unbelievable. Well, look, you know, um, to put it more in uh, contextual terms that we're all experiencing, everybody in the world today, I mean, look what's going on now, like with COVID, and look what's going on with the governments. I mean, this is almost surreal. Who would have ever imagined this? Never. Right? Never. I mean, I sent out that warning email earlier this year. But I never thought it would turn to this. The world, as far as I know, has never been shut down for anything. But now it has. And, and, and we haven't begun, folks, to even see, begin, begun to see the after effects yet of this. I can tell you in the United well, States where... Well, we're, I think what you want to say is we haven't felt the pain yet. Yeah, we haven't felt the pain yet. The pain's coming, guys. The pain train's coming. And I hope I'm dead wrong, but the pain... We haven't felt the pain train yet. We, uh, you know, I can't speak for the rest of the world. I can speak for uh, old glory. We've lost 58 million jobs, folks, in the last, like, four months in the United States. Okay, so basic math. Um, 150 million a workforce, call it 60 million. 60 divided by 15 is what? That's about a 40% um, unemployment rate. And the government's got the audacity to tell us, what are they telling us, Dave? 15%, what are they saying? 12 or something? 10. 10. Where did those numbers come up from? They get the audacity to tell us 10%. So if my workforce is about 150 million plus or minus, and, and I've already whacked almost 60 million, that's 40%, baby. How do we go from 40 to 10? What kind of math? This is what I'm talking about. You know, that we're supposed to be such freaking morons and that the elites, well, some of us are out here thinking, okay? Some of us can do basic math, okay? I don't think so. I, I think we're a country of morons. <laughs> well, that's why I just said some of us are trying to think and some of us can perform basic calculations. I'll leave it at that. Hey, I don't need a calculator to know that 60 divided by 150 is 40 percent. All right. I can figure that one out. Thanks. Yeah, the, 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 the <clears throat> fella, Owen, he sent the uh, email of the Irish parade. So the Germans have had uh, huge demonstrations, Ireland, um, other countries. Has the United States had human demonstrations? No, no. And you know why? And uh, I'll tell you right now, um, again, God forgive me, you know, I love this country, but here's the reality, folks. It's called, you got to get your ass off the couch. I don't know what else to say. You got to expend about four calories. Okay. No, no, no. I know. No, it's got to be more than that. I know that, man. I'm being facetious. Yeah. <laughs> it's got to be a lot. I get it. I understand. So, I mean, to your point, I mean, uh, a lot of countries, I give them credit. They're out in the streets and stuff. I'm not saying be violent. Protest peacefully but 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 they're out there i give the germans credit you know i give the frenchies credit they're out there a lot of these countries they're getting out there man 
They're bringing a bottle of water and they're doing it. You know, I mean, there are some Americans protesting and stuff in a good way. You said but you watched the uh, Chinese video I did with the uh, ping? Yeah, I watched it. Did you oh. did you notice the attitude difference towards towards government? And yes, yes, I did. I noticed basically, and nothing against her because I don't know the woman. She seems like a really nice woman, but um, she's she's um she's intimidated and this fear in her struck in her. And it, she, heaven forbid she say anything about her government, right? Uh, that was blatantly obvious. And then the other thing is when you pressed her on the masks and stuff like that, her comment was, well, you know, we're not, I'm not a doctor. We're not health professionals, blah, blah, blah. Right. Um, that was, that, that was, help, right. It has to help. Is what That was, mean. that was a politically correct retort is what that was. Right. And, <clears throat> and I'm not blaming her because she comes from a country, um, and none of us are perfect, but she comes from a country that, where the CCP rules with an iron hammer, okay? So on one hand, they're democratic or whatever, and they like capitalism, and they like to make money. But on the other hand, you've got a small, close-knit unit called the Chinese Communist Party, which, you know, comes off the top rope, okay? And I'm not joking around, okay? So, I mean, are you surprised that she's going to take that politically correct stance, Dave? I mean, you, you can't oh, blame her. No, no, no. But what I'm saying is, and guess what? You know, that's coming to a theater near us if we're not careful. Everything, everything in China is about quantity. Are you rich? Are you not rich? Do you have a house? Do you have two houses? Do you have a car? Do Sounds have, familiar. Do you have a kid right away after getting married? I mean, everything is very structured and organized. So, you know, you notice how she said that, you know, 5G is a great thing. I heard her say that and I almost like, coughed up my my phlegm or my lung and i sent it, you a video of some buses in china now that are operating on 5g just think of a microwave on steroids that's what it is and it's going through your body and it's not good for you that's all you need to know okay so i know there's going to be some smart alex out there because i'm just a regular guy well you know who are you do you have a phd uh what's your background Okay, well, I know that, for example, with power lines, for example, they give off a thing called flux, mm -hmm. magnetic flux, and you can't see it, okay, on the regular spectrum. But you can light it up a certain way. I think you said this one time, Dave, where you can see it. And that flux that comes off the power lines resonates through everything near it, okay, including human bodies. So basically, you're cooking yourself like a steak. Maybe not quite as fast like throwing a piece of meat in a frying pan, but you're effectively radiating yourself over time, okay? Is it any wonder why the cancer rates are so high and everybody knows somebody who has cancer? Are you all surprised? Yeah, that's what I said to her. Yeah, okay. And so I've had people debate me on this and argue with me. And they're like, well, how do you know? Okay, well, okay, whatever. <clears throat> I guess I don't know. But uh, I have common sense, I can tell you that. Okay. And I can tell you hanging out near a microwave all day is probably not going to be very healthy for you. But Dave, if you and I were from there too, we might take that stance too, right? Because she doesn't know who's going to see the video, you know? And the bottom line is, you know this better than I do with Chinese uh, culture. They now have a rating system over there now too, right? That, that oh, by the way, is they're trying to bring to the United States. Yeah, the social standing scores. Yeah, the, the social system there, standing system, you get graded. You know, are you a good citizen or not? And you've got to be graded at a certain level. And if you drop, you know, uh, below a certain level, basically you've got the government up your rear end. Yeah. It's not a pleasant feeling. <clears throat> and that's coming here too, if we're not careful. You're going to have some knucklehead politicians trying to introduce that too. And if we're asleep, we'll let it happen. And then 10 years, 20 years from now, we'll wonder how that got in. And the other thing is just going back to quantity versus quality. It's funny how easy we, uh, we trade our time. And I talked about in the last video about having only so many days, but we, we don't seem to value those as much. 
No, we don't. And uh, now that I'm older, I'm more cognizant of it, but I'm guilty too. When I was a young man, I took a lot of the time for granted, but yeah, like even working, you're trading your life, right? For, 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 for money. <clears throat> right. And, and that's how we've been conditioned, particularly in the West and in the United States, you know? And that's why if you started looking at all the decisions that you made as hours of your life, then maybe it would change the value on whatever you're spending your time on. I agree. If you break it down that way, yeah. Because we tend to think as human beings that, you know, hey, we're going to be. dollars Yeah. We're going to be here forever. Hey, what's the issue, man? Especially when you're 17, 22, 31, you think you're going to live forever. But once you hit, I think, 40, 50, 50 plus like us, you realize you ain't going to be here forever. You realize that from 20, the year of, the year of, uh, you know, 25 years old to 50 goes like that. So is it, is it any accident that I was inspired last week to read Matthew 6? Probably not. Let me ask you a question. If you believe in Matthew 6, what's more important, quality or quantity? It's got to be quality. Because you're not worried about quantity, right? It's going to come, you know, you know, you're just focused on today. You're not thinking about, I need, uh, I need 2.2 million in my IRA because the bank doesn't pay any interest anymore. You know, you're not even thinking about those things. I know you're right. You have confidence that, you know, because what you're doing is, is you are now a slave to either the IRS or to the bank or you're a slave to something or to your children. You're a slave to something. If you have to go and kill yourself to put food on the table. Spot on, dude. But this and whole system is saying you don't have to do that. Isn't that what it's saying? Well, I would say yes and no. I mean, God, I want to be clear. God expects you to get off your butt. He expects you to help yourself. He expects you to work. Yeah. Okay. Particularly since we've been thrown out of the Garden of Eden when he talks about by the sweat of your brow. That's his way of saying to Adam, hey, you made your choice, pal. You're out of the garden now, okay? This is not a joke. You're out of the garden. Now you got to bust your ass every day. I expect you. You want to eat and have a decent life? You can do it. It's there, but you got to work for it now. And oh, by the way, Eve, when you conceive and have a child, it's not going to be fun and games anymore. There's going to be some effort and pain involved giving birth. But at the same time, you know, <clears throat> you're right. I mean, he is saying, if I'm going to take care of the least common denominator or least form, you know, he cites the sparrow. If I take care of the sparrow, what am I going to do for you, Dave? I know every hair in your head, right? That's how much I love you. I know every hair in your head. I don't even have to count it. That's how much I know about you. What does that say? You know, and... <clears throat> <clears throat> but it's a tough thing. I mean, we live in a culture in a Western society, particularly the U S where, you know, you're taught to constantly slug it out, particularly if you're from the Northeast where we're from, you know, <clears throat> every day. Right. That's, that's, that's what we're taught. Grind it out. Is it no wonder why everybody's having, you know, stroking out and whatever. And, has an exercise in seventh grade and they think they're going to get in shape at 62 when they retire. Yeah. The weather, the weather doesn't help either. Yeah. It's a joke. It's a freaking joke. You know, 40 years of total neglect of your body. And then all of a sudden you think you're going to take a Richard Simmons class, <laughs> you know, and spring back in, <laughs> in three months. <laughs> it's not happening. It's not happening. And so, you know, the irony is because you made a point, you said 2.2 million in the IRA. Let's say you get the 2.2 million. You just busted, you, you know what, for 40 or 50 years, 
you're a total freaking wreck at 66. I can't tell you how many times I've seen this with people, with my buddy's dad's growing up, killing themselves. Now you're at 66, you're retired, but you're a freaking mess, okay? You're on 16 medications, and that 2.2 million you just think you earned, now you're giving it all back. You didn't think of that, did you? It's a, where's it going? Well, it's all going back to healthcare now because you're a freaking mess. And then now you live a little about inflation. That's right. And now you live a little bit longer. Geez, if you live till your eighties or something and you're really lucky, guess what? In the U S too, you get to go to a nursing home. Hey, 10 grand a month for $10,000 a month on top of your medications. Most people are going to run out of money in about, what, three months if they're lucky? That's when they stick you in a state hospital. <laughs> oh, boy. Good times. And they just stick you in the corner in your diaper and stay. Good times. Hours. <laughs> I'm 86 wearing a diaper. The full circle of life. What? I can't even wipe my own you-know-what. Nope. <laughs> I got to have a... 24 year old woman doing that for me. How embarrassing. Nothing against a 24 year old woman, but you know what I mean. Yeah, totally. So, so much for the 2.2 million. Hey, man. Uh, <laughs> you make a good point. I never thought of that even 10 years ago, dude. I do now. Maybe that's God banging on my head sometimes. Dan, I love you. He's. I'm a thick head too, like the next guy, believe Maybe me. That's why I woke up so much earlier than you because I watched my mother get sick and die. That was probably your wake up call. Yeah. And my wake up call was, um, you know, losing my family and, um, you know, getting divorced and stuff. That was my wake up call. That was God. Yeah. That's traumatic. Yeah. It was traumatic. Yeah. And then losing my job on top of that, you know, um, it's probably God saying, dude, you need to wake up, brother. I've been trying to get your attention. What do I got to do to get your attention, Dan? Well, now he's giving you a cough. <laughs> <clears throat> I haven't coughed that much in this video. Give me a break. That's well, because you put it on mute. <laughs> and I'm drinking my pH water. Uh, you coughed a lot. It, I'll, I'll bet you it adds up to like 100 times since, since we started this. God Almighty, somebody stop me. <laughs> I'm just I'm just busting you. What else is new? Yeah. Well, I'm not sure we did a very good job covering Revelation eleven. Hey, we're trying. We're just a couple of I'll speak for myself. You know, I'm not a pastor. I'm not trained in theology. I, I just try to listen and understand what I can. I don't have all the answers. I don't think people are going to expect us to have all the answers. I actually think for what it's worth, we did a decent job, Dave. I mean, did we yeah, interpret well, yeah, they can did we interpret every line and every symbolism? No. But, but again, I don't think that's quite as important. I don't. But I do think the overarching <clears throat> you know, concept is important, right? Which to me is, look, God's going to send a couple of messengers and he's going to tell us stuff that we don't want to hear. And the bulk of people are not going to like it. All right. That's so what, let's, let's just end it by this then. <clears throat> what percentage, one to a hundred percent, would you say that JFK is going to surface in the next, in the next six months? Oh, dude, come on. Man. <laughs> Did you have your cocoa pops yet? Um, uh, does it have to be a full percent or can it be a fraction thereof? It's got to be a full Any percent. Number Any number could be negative. <laughs> <clears throat> I'm going to say zero. I mean, or point, I'll say 0.1%. It's highly unlikely. I mean, let me put it this way. Let me, let me put it this way. God, um, <clears throat> God has messages for us all the time. He uses nature a lot to communicate with us. Uh, a perfect example would be going back to, uh, to the Fire. book of Genesis, to the book of Genesis when he made the covenant, um, I think, uh, was it with Noah or Abraham with the rainbow? He made the covenant with man. 
uh, saying that he would not um, do what he did again, I think, with the flood, right? Was, or was that the Abrahamic uh, covenant? The other thing is, the other thing, and, and leave you on this note too, God does this all the time. <clears throat> he usually delivers messages with people that you least expect. He always does that. Yeah, like Donald he, Trump. Exactly. And, and, oh, what are you talking about, he Dave? He would be president. Exactly. Exactly. Is he a bull in a china closet? Is he, you know, kind of annoying? Is he obnoxious? Um, he's all of those above. things. All of the above. <clears throat> Absolutely. Does he have an ego? Does he walk around like the big peacock? Absolutely. But here's the point. This is what you got to understand, folks. God does this time and time again. You can look through history. There's a million examples where he uses people that you would least expect, and he does it on purpose. He doesn't choose the best looking, the brightest, the smartest, the most articulate, the least annoying, the most perfect. You know why he does it, guys? Because that's his way of saying, I can do what I want, and I'm in control. I can take the least of you and take you from the bottom, and I can raise you to the top, or vice versa, in a snap of a finger. That's why he does it. And so for those of you that think, for example, to Dave's point that, uh, you know, Trump is whatever, a beast and he's evil and he shouldn't be there or whatever. Well, maybe you're right, but maybe you're wrong too. Because again, he uses messengers well, all the time. The least you, the people you least expect. Well, let, I don't want to go off that Trump tangent, but let me ask yeah, you. Yeah, I'm not, it's not about Trump. Yes, I'm just, yes, yes or no, have you been... Have you, are you disappointed with his performance so far? Or I think um, <clears throat> I, I'm, I, I'm not happy with his performance. I, I know, I know you're not. I think he's done a decent job considering. Um, he 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 he's done a decent job considering. I mean, think well, about I it. Expected more. I expected well, more. okay, and I'll give you that. But my comment to that is this, dude. Look at the results resistance he's had from day one before he was even elected they were threatening to impeach him man before well, he was even elected yeah. and yeah. then they and then uh, and guys don't get me wrong i'm not saying i'm a trump fan i'm not necessarily a trump fan but but just be objective for a minute try well, to be fair I, I will, forget i will give you that he's for, had russia gate and for, forget gate. the left forget the right forget being partisan be objective. Exactly. They were going to impeach him before he was elected. They threw the Russia gate at him. Yep. They threw the women thing at him that he's a rapist. Yep. They threw that he's a groper. Uh, I mean, you name it. They've thrown everything at him in the kitchen sink. Um, Congress will not work with him. The Democrats won't even speak to him. Yeah. Now they're calling him. Now they're calling him and Republicans. They're calling them. Uh, did you see that Nancy Pelosi speech? I heard it in passing. No, he no, called them, um, no. Oh, yeah. it was a real bad slam. Um, you're going to have to look at it. Yeah, no, no, no. Without, yeah, exactly. It's like, um, like these people are devils or something. Exactly. Like that. But yeah. the point is, without those details, all the things we just rattled off. I mean, the guy has never had a break since day one. Again, before he was even in office, they weren't giving him a break, and they were laughing at him. And here's the reality, guys, whether you think so or not. I truly believe this, okay? Not because I'm a Trump fan. He shouldn't have won the election. We all agree on that. Even the most leftist Democrat will agree he shouldn't have won the election. I didn't think he was going to win the election. I truly believe, and I'll go out on a limb and say in public, it, it was really a miracle he won. I wasn't expecting it. It was really a miracle he won. Okay? Yeah, I was surprised. <clears throat> you could argue it was an act of God. Now, by me saying that, then you could come back at me and say, well, you're telling me, Dan, that God wanted him to win? <sighs> I don't know. But what I am telling you is it was a miracle that he won. I'm not saying God wanted him to win, but it was a miracle he won. Okay? Um, that's it. Uh I didn't think he was going to win. I thought Hillary was going to uh, clean his clock. I didn't want her to win, but I thought she was going to clean his clock. And that didn't happen. So, But if, but if Revelation is saying all of this is preordained, 
it really doesn't matter who wins that. <clears throat> no, it doesn't because um, you're right. I mean, I believe in the word of God. Everything that Revelation says, folks, is going to go down. We just don't know exactly when. It's going to go down. If you believe in God, you believe Christ is the Son of God and he's your Savior, then you by default believe in the Bible and you believe in the Word. Even if you don't understand it all, by default you believe in it. I believe in it. Um, and, and, you know, um, <clears throat> you know, you don't... If you truly believe that, Dan... Okay, if, if you truly believe that, yeah, then then I suppose maybe your time would be better spent being prepared spiritually and emotionally, rather than worrying about maximizing the retirement account, right? Yeah, I agree. Because because, because you and I are only going to be here another thirty or fifty years. If we're lucky, I get it. Right. No, stop saying that. Yeah. Well, uh, okay, that's a figment of speech. Sorry. Okay. I mean, yeah, 30 or 50 years, whatever. Tops. Most Tops. likely. Yeah. Statistically speaking, you can say. Yeah. <clears throat> Agreed. Okay. Yeah. If you're in your 50s, how much? We're on the downside. I get it, bro. So, so, so as I walk through the graveyards that people have been in there hundreds of years. And then we know people were around thousands of years ago that have been dead. Yeah. So my point is, is there's more upside for preparing after we're dead. Yes. Am I making any sense? You're making a ton of sense. The bottom line is guys, you only hear 80 to a hundred years after you die. That's an eternity. And to Dave's point, uh, you really need to be concerned about even more so what happens after you die. Because <clears throat> you've got two basic choices if you believe in the word of God. And he tells you, okay, you're either in, you're, your name is either in the uh, uh, Lamb's Book of Life, okay, which is referenced in Genesis. I forget which uh, chapter. But if you're a true believer and you've been born again, and Christ is your Lord and Savior, your name is now recorded in the Lamb's Book of Life, which means that um, you will, you will, that means that the Lord has reserved a place for you in heaven. If you are not in that, if your name is not recorded in that book, the, the Lord has not reserved a place for you in heaven. So you can figure out if you're not going to heaven, then where are you going? Well, he tells you where you're going. You basically go into the <clears throat> the uh, basically the lake of fire, essentially fire and brimstone. He, he tells you that God 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 um, doesn't pull his punches, right? You're either with you know he basically says you're either with me slash for me or against me. There's no in the middle. Now you either take that seriously or you don't. You either think it's a joke or you don't. I don't think it's a joke. And to Dave's point, you're going to be dead or off this earth a lot longer than you would have been here. A lot longer. So for people, I mean, should, so should people like on a day-to-day -day basis, mm -hmm. how should, you know, how can people actually incorporate this into their daily lives. Excellent point. Um, so what I would suggest is every single day, you got to try to make it a habit, start tomorrow, start right now, actually. Uh, and then for at least 21 days, if not longer, uh, you, you need to make it a habit. Uh, right. Scientists or psychologists say you got to do something 21 days to, to get it into your psyche and make it <clears throat> a new habit forming type of thing. So um, you need to start praying every day. I would pray uh, probably when you get up in the morning, uh, maybe a quick little prayer sometime around lunch and before you go to bed at night, and you need to find ways to get closer to God. On top of that, you need to start reading the Word. You've got to get a Bible, and you've got to start reading the Word. And you've got to start putting <clears throat> what you're learning into action every day. That's the other thing. Dave harps on this all the time. Sometimes he beats me up on it, and righteously so. 
bottom line is it's nice to learn stuff and know about it, <laughs> but you got to put it into action. God's the same way. He's all about action. He's like, that's great that you think you know me and you think you know the word, but if you're not living it, you ain't proving it to me. He expects action too. And you never fully understand it till you act it as well. That's a good point. It's a good point. But uh, so those are baby steps way to start. And then eventually too, what you got to do is you got to become born again. You got to get baptized. You got to become born again. And you got to do it in a public place. That's what the Bible says. You're required to do that. That's what the word says. I've said that to people. Some of them get ticked off, pissed off with me. And I'm like, look, man, take it well, up with him. Why don't you do this, Dan? Over the next week, why don't you just reference, to, it said it's in the Bible. Why don't you find that section of Bible? And we'll start with that next week. Oh, about born again? Well, you just said it's mentioned in the Bible. What yeah, yeah, yeah. <clears throat> yep. Okay. Let me find it. Yeah. Let me find we'll it. Pick it off with that because... There's a lot of people out there who probably want to make sure that they're going to be saved. And they probably believe that maybe they're okay, but maybe they're not, or maybe they have no idea where to start or where to go. Yeah. Well, um, you can start here real quick too. And, you know, I could just say a quick little prayer right now. And for those that watch this, they can, take that initial step of acceptance. All right. Before you start this prayer, you know what just popped into my head? <laughs> you no. Want to get that? <laughs> no. No. Here we go. Oh, this is God. hilarious. God almighty. <laughs> you know God has a sense of humor, by the way, when he's got these two clowns here. <laughs> Remember when we were living in There's Randolph? There's no doubt in my mind. We were living in Randolph. He has a sense of humor. <laughs> and it was probably a Sunday morning, and it was early in the morning. Oh, and here was we this, go. There was this joker from Texas. Yeah, he had so he was some famous guy who had the you know those those online churches. He's a preacher. Oh. And he, and he goes like this right to the camera. He goes, "God will not save you unless you send me ten thousand dollars right now." Do you yes. remember that? Oh, vaguely. And yeah. I and I turned to you. I said, Dan, did you hear that? Oh my God, this guy should be shot. <laughs> <clears throat> oh man. Maybe it wasn't ten thousand, but he was like, Get me uh, right now and send me a hundred dollars or whatever this the was, was. This that must was have been like the early nineteen ninety something. These were the early nineties, I think. Yeah, like ninety one, ninety two is my guess. <clears throat> yeah. It was Sunday morning, and then they have those available. And I, I'll tell you, that was, and I'm sure, and I told you, there's probably some old lady writing him a check right now. I'm like. Well, but here's the thing. You know, you're bringing that up. So and folks, you, folks, if you want to be saved before Dan, <clears throat> write Dan a check for 10000 No, stop. <laughs> stop. You know, the Bible talks about fools, by the way, too. Proverbs mentions fools, too. So anyway, don't be a fool. Yeah, but <laughs> but um, no, I mean, all kidding aside, to your point, I mean, there um, in in the end times and stuff, you're going to have a lot of people come to the forefront that are supposedly um, men of God and stuff like that, and they're going to be false false preachers. There's going to be a lot of them. They're going to sound good. They're going to sound good. They're going to sound convincing, <clears throat> but they but they're not going to be the real deal, and um, you know. Maybe that's part of it too. I mean, if you've got somebody saying, send me $10,000, you know, or else, you know, you're a goner, you know, I'm thinking they're probably not legit. So now at the same time, are you supposed to support your local church? Yes. Are you supposed to uh, make offerings that you can afford? Yes. Technically, are you supposed to tithe and support your local church? Yes. God expects that of you. He says it. In his word. He says 10% of it's mine. So when you think about it, guys, no matter what you make a year, 50 grand, 100 grand, 500,000, 3 million, at the end of the day, <clears throat> everything in the universe is God's. Believe it or not, guys, including money, okay? 
the money wouldn't exist and it wouldn't go to you if it wasn't his. You may not think so or know so, but that's why he mentions the tithe. That's his way of saying, hey, you God, know what? the IRS took your 10% or more. Um, go get exactly. Go <laughs> exactly. <laughs> go, go use your lightning and your thunder to bolt them down. Yeah, I, yeah well, you know, I, yeah, I don't even want to go there. I mean, that's, uh, you know, only God can take on the IRS, that's for sure. But uh, we'll leave it at that. Yeah. Right. So what's the prayer you wanted to go with? Well, it's not a big fancy thing. I mean, it's just, uh, the, I guess the only thing I would say is, uh, Lord, for those folks out there that are unsure, uh, you know, and that have doubts or aren't believers, just if they can open up their heart, th this would be the time to do it. If you can accept uh um, Jesus Christ is your Lord and Savior. Number one, do you believe he's the Son of God? Number two, do you believe that he has died for your sins? Do you believe that he was crucified on the cross and died for your sins? And number three, do you believe that he was resurrected? Yes. If you can say yes to these things, then you are saved. Hallelujah. Seriously. That, you know, what I just said, if you truly can accept this, because this is a gift, guys. This is a gift. He doesn't have to do this. You don't this have is... to understand it either. No, because you, you know, for those people that say, and I have people in my family that say this, well, I'm a good person. You know, I do good things. I go to church. I help people here and I give some change to um, the stranger in the street that needs it. No, that's. That, that, does, that doesn't do it, guys. None of us are worthy enough is the point. We're all sinful. We're all sinners, okay? God is not. He, he's perfect. We, we could never, uh, through, through our actions, um, you know, own up to him and work our way to him, so to speak, that way through our deeds. Could never happen, right? That's why he gives you the gift to accept that's why he gives you really two things. Number one, choice. He didn't make you a robot. He gave you a sound mind and a spirit, if you're willing to connect with him. So he gave you choice. <clears throat> and he gave you the well, gift. And it's your choice to accept it or not. Now, if you decide not to accept it, he's fine with that. But just understand that's on you. Yeah, we covered no, no. that before. Free will to make bad decisions. Yes, exactly. So that's it. And we'll stop right here. One more thing. You know, people say all the time in the world, well, you know, if there is a God, why does bad things happen in the world? Why do we have wars, plagues, pestilence, prostitution, you name it? <clears throat> it comes down to our choices. That's why, guys. We bring these things on ourselves. And, and there is good and evil out there. And there are at least three angels that are listed in the Bible. You know, God has, I don't know how many angels, probably thousands. But there was Michael, Gabriel, and who's the third angel? That was, you got it. Only three angels that I know of are listed by name in the Bible. Michael, Gabriel, and Lucifer. And we know who Lucifer is, right? The fallen angel. And he took one third of them with him. Mm -hmm.